Brian, Brian, stop the tape. Okay, Mike. Oh, wait, rewind that scene, please. Rewind that scene. Rewind that scene. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind that scene. Rewind that scene. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Brian Bonds. And this is Rewind Rewind That that Scene. Yeah. A podcast where we go back in time and dissect and analyze our favorite movies from the 80s, 90s, and beyond into. Yeah, it's a really, it's like a chance to learn something. (laughs) We always learn something new. We ask them, uh, our favorite actors, like what they like and how their experience was, you know, shit like that. And this one, this Marge Marge. One of our favorite characters who actually looks like Brian. 1985, an American comedy adventure film by Tim Burton, his first debut. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I actually think this might be Tim Burton's, one of his best movies in my honest goddamn opinion. Yes. People might not agree, but I think it's pretty up there. It's true. For a Tim Burton. It's true. And, and I believe this yes. script was co-written by um, Phil Hartman, the late Phil Hartman from SNL. Yes. You know, rest in peace. But a yes, comedic yes. genius and, and also Paul Rubens, who plays Pee Wee Herman, is... Is, is amazing Oh my too, God, man. he's the it's best. Just, it's such a great movie. Uh, I remember having the little pull doll. You had the doll too, right? Where you yeah, pulled the string. Yeah, the string, yeah. Man. Oh my God. It was sick. So good, yeah, right? Man. I love Pee Wee. It's so cool, man. He's the best. I mean, I guess like the whole essence is like he's this adult person who doesn't really want <laughs> to like grow up. He's like adult yeah, kid. Yeah, it's sick. Yeah. I was always really amazed by all the uh, contraptions, like when he opens the little grass patch to the bike. It's like, doot, 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 like the little like so good. secret stuff, and like the way the breakfast comes in with the toast. And he's like, huh, you know, like, huh. and he swings on the on the Tarzan vine, and like, I don't know. There's just so many like little like details, and of course the uh, oh yeah, Buxton Francis, was yeah. another huge character for us, Francis Buxton. And I think that 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 inspired you, Brian, to have all your daddy jokes, like with your whole like, I get anything that I want from my father. Anything's negotiable. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, Brian would say that at parties and almost get decked out by a bunch of Vinnie elbows. My father says anything's negotiable. <laughs> I love it when he gives the when Pee Wee gives the dad fake uh, gum in his mouth. Oh his my wing. God! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, also because it, the way it cuts, right? I mean, as an editor, the way it, I remember Jay LaCorey, my brother, said he thought that was a mistake in the editing. So good. But it might be on purpose, but it was so, it, it left him with a feeling. It left him with a feeling of feeling very uncomfortable. And I think, I think that's why. It's great because you know what's happening to Francis's dad when he, when he grunts like that. Also, what kind of comes yeah. that? And the way Pee Wee's just standing there like this. Yeah. yeah. And Fran, Fran, Francis is too. And he's another grown ass person who's acting like an adult. It's great when he goes to his mansion with the music and the, the door knock. And the little knocking hand on the door. <laughs> Where are they hosing him down? <laughs> The for yeah, where are they hosing him down? What about the first time that you saw the low angle of the clown dude holding the chains? Oh my god, that That's shit was great, terrifying man. Like when his bike gets stolen, and then like yeah, he, he sees everyone around him riding, <laughs> riding bicycles too, it's and it's too. every different size bike. From like a, a one wheeler to like a little it's kid a with a remote movie. control bike, it's making me want to watch it again. Uh, yes. So we were so inspired by this movie that um, my second year at School of Visual Arts, uh, we made a movie called Sanchez, which was essentially the whole point of this movie yes, was to yes. pay homage to Pee Wee Herman, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So the whole idea was about this guy who gets his bike stolen at Owl's Head Park by kind of a creepy weirdo guy. Yes. Um, so that was really fun. And everyone in my class was yes. like, oh my God, this is like a Pee Wee vibe. <laughs> so, you know. It was great. And, you know, Sanchez was played yes. by the late Anthony Barisi, which we also respect and love. But it was a great movie that I saw you yes. kind of shot yes. in a short amount of time, I feel like. It was a, it's like a, it was like a two-day kind of shoot, and we did the music fast. It was, a, it was sick. And, and um, uh, Yeah, it was so good. And the best part was at the end, he 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 gets the the villain, and he does his ultimate frog move, yeah, where so he jumps sick. like thirty feet in the air. And I we shot him jumping off of a car, right? Oh, by num- yeah, by ammonia. Yeah, with say. your amazing score underneath it, and it was just really really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who else was in the movie? John uh, John Clinton. Yes, John Clinton. 
So we had Damn. all of our, you know, school visual arts people. We had a bunch of people from the neighborhood that made cameos by Three Jolly Pigeons. Gooberman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about Diane Salinger, who plays uh, Au revoir. Oh my God, Simone! She is the best, an amazing actress, best known for her amazing work and all the amazing things mm-hmm, she's done. Mm-hmm. She's from theater. She loves Joan of Arc. Yes, and she's on today's show. You've seen her in Batman Returns, uh-huh. Pee Wee's Big Adventure as Simone, and so many other interesting movies. Rizzo, tell me what you feel. Oh, I can't wait to talk to her because she left an impact on me. And Brian, when we watched her, and let's just say her accent, her vibe, her hairstyle, her au revoir, bring her on. Come on. So, so how did you um, transitional? How did you get into the Simone character? Like, how did you uh, find the audition and, and get that role? It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was new to LA, and I'd come from ten years of Shakespeare all around the country. And I thought of myself as a very serious actress. (laughs) Now I don't. (laughs) But, uh, uh, and and I went in for an interview uh, with Mindy Marin, who's an incredible casting director. And she said to me, Diane, you're not, you're not for TV. You're, you're totally movies. And she said, I'm going to put your headshot and resume on my friend's desk. And um, she's casting a movie right now. So then her friend um, was casting Pee-wee's Big Adventure, and she had me in the next day. She said, okay, just read this over a couple times. And I went into the bathroom, and it was Simone. And I thought, well, they'll never cast me as a, a truck stop waitress because I sound very East Coast, very kind of, you know, I get a lot of... Um, like anti mame you know, very elegant, very eccentric roles. And I thought, I'm never going to get this if I sound the way I sound. So I thought I'd make her Southern. Again, I, I used as a preparation something in nature um, that had moved me very much when I was in the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. And it was these incredible golden mountains and the sun had dried up all the wheat on the mountains and it looked like pure gold. And I looked at this one day and I thought, I want to create something as incredible as this mountain with the gold. So I used this as my preparation to go into, do you have, I'm telling you this, I've never told anyone in my life because I never tell, I never tell preparation. It's so, it's so internal and it weakens it if you talk, talk about it. And so when I teach actors, I don't even, say, what are you using? You know, I'll say, this is it, or let's try something else. Let's try something more, blah, blah, blah. But I never say, tell me what you're using because it's precious. It's totally, it's your inner, you know, it's like telling a nightmare. If you tell a nightmare, the the image, it gets weaker by telling it. And so you don't tell, this is your goal, you know? So anyway, I use this image, um, of, you know, the sun hitting these golden hills, uh, you know, in Ashland, Oregon, and that I wanted to create this, you know, as an artist, something this incredible. And it turns out Michelangelo did the same thing. (laughs) He at least was painting, you know, the Sistine Chapel and sculpting. And so it's a little more challenging as an actor to create something like, you know, Hills of Gold with acting. But I used that as my preparation. And they brought me back that day to read with Paul. Tim was there, Tim Burton. And I remember biting Paul's finger in the audition. It was kind of very sexual. (laughs) They didn't let me do this in the show. Nice. um, That's how I got it. Damn. I've never said this before either, but um, when I read the script after they gave me the role, there was a scene in the beginning that, that with uh, Speck or whatever, Spot, whatever the dog's name was, and it had been licking its ass oh, yeah, the dog. on camera <laughs> and then licked Paul's face and lips. Oh, no. And I thought, oh, my God, I come from Shakespeare. I have fallen this low, and I almost... Yeah. I, 
I don't know. I hope Paul doesn't hear this. But I, I almost um, turned it down because of that scene. I thought, you know, I do Shakespeare. I cannot do a movie with a dog licking its button and licking the star's face. I just can't do this. Well, mercifully, they never shot that scene. <laughs> so, and I continued, you know, I decided, oh, sh- I should just do this. I'm new to L.A. I should absolutely do this movie. So that's, that's, <laughs> that, that's my story of that. <laughs> I think it's great because... You know, people, they don't know about these stories. They haven't heard them before, you know? I've never yeah. told anyone these, these yeah. those two stories of what I used as my preparation. And then also the story of, you know, with Speck. Yeah. yeah, you know, I really love the fact that you can tap into that personal inspiration. You know, it, like you were saying earlier, you know, it's really sacred. And each artist is different uh, from each other and what they use in their toolbox. But I think it's great that you have that Southern accent and, you know, and just even the diner scene. I mean, in this film, you're so amazing. Uh, I wanted to learn just like how you tapped into that. And also, did Paul Rubens really do all the dishes at the diner? Because I yeah. would love to know. <laughs> oh, God, he never did one of the dishes. Of course not. <laughs> I love his hair net in it. I just love yeah, his yeah. hair net. <laughs> He looks beautiful. Like it's, it's yeah. great. I think I'm so alive in that movie because I didn't know as much as I know now and with acting. And I love, uh, you know, to keep learning. But at that point, I just, you know, would see a preparation. And I think, again, it was the Golden Hills of Ashland, Oregon, going into that scene uh, where he's washing the dishes, where I ask him to come up to the, you know, into the dinosaur with me to see the sunrise, or the su- it was yes, the sunrise, and uh, you know, I just had such a big dream about creating something as big as those golden mountains, and it just was my sort of like my through line for the entire thing, Paris, France, all that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and it's really funny because. You know, life imitates art, but also art imitates... You think that art imitates life, yes. But what's extraordinary is that that it goes the other way. And I don't know what I'm saying exactly, except that, you know, (laughs) with Paris, France, I'm obsessed by France in a way I wasn't when I made the movie. And so it was like a premonition of... Where of where I am now. I go to France every time I can. And I had a one-way ticket to Paris. That was on April 27th. And, and you know, I've had to cancel it. And, you know, I have all these French friends and I was going to stay with friends in Orléans because they're doing, now they've postponed it because of COVID, but they're doing the 100th anniversary of Joan of Arc's canonization. She was made a saint 500 years after the fucking church burned her. We're so much connected, not only to each other, but our own paths. And there is really no time, as Einstein says. So, you know, I'm, I'm dying to go to France 35 years ago in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> and I'm dying <laughs> yeah, yeah. to go to France now. <laughs> yes. And I've been three times... Uh... On this journey to France, following Joan of Arc's footsteps, I've gone to right. like 45 of the towns and villages where she went wow. in a year and a half on horseback. She actually went to 80 of them. <laughs> Insane. And I've been to about 45 of them. And now I take my time. I don't race, you know. And, and well, so when you're on that bus going, au revoir. I didn't want you to leave, you know? It was sad. You going away on the bus. <laughs> How many takes of au revoir did you have to Not do? many. It was right after lunch. <laughs> I think we did two or three, you know? And, and oh, Large March. I want to tell you about Large March. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The best. That day at the bus stop was my first day of shooting. And I was very nervous. And we shot this. Um, you know, in Burbank by the equestrian centers, you know, I remember the equestrian center was near it. And anyway, I was in the hair and makeup trailer and they were doing my hair and makeup. And all of a sudden the whole bus shook and it literally went back and forth like this. And oh. this woman 
stepped up onto the bus, and it was Large Marge. And yes, the whole I love her. bus shook wow. when she got up there. <laughs> and, Marge, Marge. and she just shook the bus and she said, what the fuck is this? You know, what the fuck? I couldn't find this piece of shit place. And I thought, whoa, what a character. What a character. So anyway, that was my introduction to Large Marge. And then the guy, Andy, yes. who played my boyfriend. Oh, my God. It was the first day I met him. Bruno! I love Bruno. The, oh, I love his the character, Bruno. too. And he was so sweet. And his he was enormous. He was so tall. And I'm five. I'm now five ten and a half, but I was like five eleven at the time. And I went up to him, and I was just trying to make conversation. And he had his his little outfit on, you know, with a little cat. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, he looked like Tweedledum and Tweedledee. And and I went up to it, and his belly came up to about my my eyesight. I mean, he's huge. Yeah. And I went up, and I patted his belly, and I said, nice padding. And he said, it's not padding. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. See, this is the stuff. This is the stuff that no one knows about that is just gold. Because it's great. It's the scene when he's at the bus window and the guy looks all the way up. It's almost what happened to you. Really? He, uh, he's passed away now. But the tall ones go early, I think. But, um, yeah. you know, he was incredibly tall. I mean, I remember asking him after that. I was trying to make up to him for <laughs> insulting his belly. And I said, so, uh, I said, my cousin is second in charge of a nuclear submarine, and he is six, seven and a half. And he can't stand up. How tall are you? He, my cousin couldn't stand up in the majority of the submarine, only in the hull of the submarine. And I said, how tall are you? And he was taller than my cousin, who was six, seven and a half. I mean, I think he was like six, wow. eight, maybe, or six, nine. I mean, he was incredibly tall. Who, who's the guy who um, did the music? Uh, oh, uh, Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. I bumped into, at a screening of something else he was part of a couple years ago, and I went up to him afterwards and I said, you know, I think this is, Pee-wee's Big Adventure is Tim's best movie. And Danny Elfman said, I think so too. Oh, wow. And, and I said, please give Tim my love. We did, Paul and I did uh, Batman Returns with Tim Burton. Yes. Well. Yes. Amazing, classic. Tim was wonderful and to give us this, and it's awesome. You guys have worked on so many projects together too, and you have history together. Um, you know, love your dynamic as the Penguin's parents in Batman Returns. Yeah, um, you know, shooting the dinosaur scene in Pee Wee's Big Adventure with Bruno. What was it even like being in there, and and how was that? Uh, you know, vibe and capturing that whole sequence. Cabasan, where the dinosaurs are, and we. It was like, I didn't, why even go to sleep? I think the call to be at Warner Brothers was at 4.20. I remember this, in the morning to get out to the dinosaurs. You know, we went out there and we shot the exterior of the dinosaur before the sun came up. Right. And it was freezing. And uh, I had to be in this little outfit and Paul was cold too. And it was, it was really shocking to look like it was a warm summer night when yeah. it was, you know, it was like 5.30, 6 in the, in the morning and the sun hadn't come up yet in the desert and it's so cold. I mean, it must have been like 30 or 40 degrees. Yeah. And um, I mean, Paul and I have worked together three times. The last one was uh, Pee Wee's Big Holiday. Yes, yes. And so when we did... Batman Returns, you know, I'm a serious actress. <laughs> and Paul, Paul comes from a very different um, background than I do. You know, I did 10 years of Shakespeare, for God's sake. And, right. and so Paul is cracking me up in the Batman Returns, you know, when we turn around and then we drink together in unison the wine as we're watching this kitten or cat walk by the cage that has our baby in it, who is the penguin baby. And, the, and this beautiful 
um, very, very small person who is a beautiful girl. I mean, just staggeringly beautiful. She was in the cage dressed up as the baby penguin. And, you know, Paul and I are, 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 are at our wits end because the next scene we throw the penguin baby over the bridge. And so we're, you know, we're supposed to be exhausted and just at the end of our ropes. And I'm preparing and Paul is cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I said, Sh- shut up, Paul. Shut up. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> shut up. And, and, you know, and, and then we have to be so serious. And the take they took, uh, you can actually see a tear if you look closely enough going down the side of my cheek, you know, because we're at our wits end and we know that we're going to get rid of this kid. <laughs> 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 so I mean Paul and I just um we have we 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 know each other very well put it that way and then when I went to the will turn to see you know the big peewee big adventure 35th anniversary cele- celebration it was it was wonderful being backstage with him and he introduced me and EG and then uh the lead guy who was in peewee's big holiday who Oh, yeah, he's great. My wife loves him. I know that guy. Fabulous. Joe Mangiello. Joe Mangiello. There we go. Mangiello. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and Paul is introducing him, and the audience just goes crazy. Yeah. There were three of us that night at the Will Turn. And then we all went backstage, and, and I brought several of my friends, and, and we were all in the green room downstairs eating eating food mm-hmm. and, just, you know, and, and Paul and I were talking about there's a band called Au Voix Simone. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's and, cool. And uh, I was saying to Paul, you know, we really should go to see them that's sometime cool. if they still exist. I think they do. It's yeah. an all-girl band. And I thought, you know, Paul and I showing up to Au Voix yeah. Simone would be so precious. And, you know, someday we may do that. But we're, we're just... Um, we're very comfortable with each other. What about if we were to do Brian and I the first female Pee Wee Herman? Would you play her? <laughs> <laughs> A full length feature. I could see it. <laughs> yeah, right? I think that could be good. Uh, I, I was thinking more like Auntie Mame, you know. I love I, she, Rosalind Russell's Auntie Mame is who I want to become, and I think I'm quickly becoming that. I love it. <laughs> or a variation of it. And um, I, I, you know, but I, I love Simone, and I played Catherine Hepburn. Yeah. It was supposed to be Catherine Hepburn, even though they called her uh, Penny King in Pee Wee's Big. Holiday, um, yeah, but it was Catherine Hepburn, and and uh, I was really excited about playing it because I had a dream years ago that I would play Catherine Hepburn, and I knew I was going to play Catherine Hepburn, and so I was really nervous and excited about this audition because I thought this might be the only chance I get to play Hepburn. So. Me to play Pee Wee, I, I don't think anyone could play it except Paul because he's such right. a genius. Yeah, yeah. I, no one could play this. What is another dream role that you would want to do? Oh, God. Well, I, I'm writing this Joan of Arc modern day project. And um, I probably, the, the modern day girl is basically me mixed in with this woman who was really wacky in my acting class with Uta Hagen. And, um, but it's basically me. And now I could play my mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, very, uh, very theatrical. Very, right. uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dream of mine. I probably will play my mother in, in this production. I, cer- I certainly won't be playing the 24-year-old girl. Uh-huh. So, um, but I, I mean, Auntie Mame absolutely is up there. Awesome. As far as anyone else playing Paul, there's absolutely no one else who could play him. No one. It's true. Yep. It just, um, you know, Jerry Lewis is another one of these archetypes of the eternal boy that was another generation before us or two generations before us. And Jerry Lewis is just brilliant. And I think there's a real need in our society for these Peter Pan archetypes. And Paul, as Pee Wee Herman, is that archetype. 
And there hasn't been anyone else since we did Pee Wee's Big Adventure. There's no one. Right. It's very, very specific. And as far as I know, there's only been two, Jerry Lewis and then Paul Rubens. And yeah. there hasn't been anyone in 35 years except for Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It's, it's just no one like that. I agree. I agree. I mean, you have such Definitely. a unique contribution and special vibe in this film. And uh, it came out at a, a really amazing time. And the chemistry that everybody has, it's it's a real special movie. And I, I always tell people that haven't seen it, you're crazy. You have to see this movie. You're missing <laughs> yeah. out. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's one that we're always still recommending and, and glad it's making its rotation. Um, you know, before we wrap up, I was just also curious if you had any sort of creative life advice um, that you'd like to share to, you know, get over just any creative roadblocks and, you know, wisdom. Uh, I do, actually. The, fir- the biggest one is meditate every day. Uh, spend time in nature, whatever nature you've got. Um, yep. And in, in, a Native American psychic told me how to talk to trees. I love this. <laughs> nice. So you can go up to any tree, <laughs> you know, pick a special tree that you particularly love in your park, and you lean up against it, and you can take a, a journal, and you can ask it questions, and you, you know, you, you're leaning up against it, so your back of your head, your shoulders, your back, your butt are all up against the tree. You ask the tree a question, and then the tree will, you'll hear an answer, and the tree will ans- answer you, and you can write down what it says, or just hear it and remember it. So these are incredible ways of getting over blocks. Um, And the meditation is amazing. And then the last thing, um, the guy I'm not seeing because of COVID, but the guy I'm seeing and not seeing, um, I taped from him on Skype uh, um, uh, hypnosis. He did like a hip... A hypnotic, uh, what do you call it? Hypnotic trance for three and a half minutes. And I listen to that before I begin writing. And it just makes me go down deeply. So these are all my techniques I can awesome. recommend. But oh, yeah. hypnosis is terrific for blocks. This is great. Because I get scared dealing with such a huge subject like Joan of Arc. <laughs> You know, and and I just, so when I go into this hypnosis, all these ideas just come to me like that. So those are, those are my ideas. (laughs) Well, thank you, Diane. Yeah, you made our peewee dreams come true. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Diane, thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you. Oh my God, that was such a dream. I feel replenished and revised and just refreshed yes. and inspired, Riz. And thank you for saying the au revoir back to us again. Oh, my God. Yes. What so an let's amazing talk about, piece of history. Yes. I mean, the story, the history there. I love their relation, her relationship with Paul Rubin. Yeah, man. Um, it's crazy. It's right? crazy. And then also to shoot these things. I can't believe, you know, I, I, I was convinced that Paul Rubin did all the dishes <laughs> he <laughs> yes, said you were. he didn't even do one single dish, uh, <laughs> and I love that. I love that she also said that her brother was in the navy when she went to Tall Andy. Yes, and uh, she thought he was wearing padding on his tummy. <laughs> yeah, but it was a real tummy, like a tummy to the top move that you usually do. Such a good like, tummy. Yes, and let's also say like I love that Large Marge is actually like that in real life because I feel like that's not like. She cannot be anything else other than her, and that's great that that was her intro to Large Marge. <laughs> I feel like they have that actress. <laughs> she must great. have showed up in a real p- uh, truck and, <laughs> and parked in it. And then after they <laughs> shot her scene, yeah. she can, went back on the road. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love like when they all stop, when they all stop and do the stare around, they're like, well, Large Marge is dead. Or, you know, like that line, like, you're talking to her ghost. And you hear her laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the laugh. The laugh is the best part. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, oh my god, yeah, that actress's name was Alice Nunn from Florida, Jacksonville. Oh my yeah, god, she di- dude, we gotta find her, but she's yeah, dead. Yeah, she right? died at sixty. That was probably her last role. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's, it's, I love her. It's. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh my God. That's a great person. Damn, what I would do to ride in a truck with her, dude, and talk about the scene. Yeah. Let's talk about the claymation too, man. How fucking great was that claymation when we first oh saw that good. shit? The, the, with the eyes uh, bu- bulging out. So good, the way they bug out. Yeah, that's such a creepy yeah. scene, man. And and and, <laughs> and <laughs> just how her t- her tongue goes out, and then she like, <laughs> and she just turns away and drives. <laughs> Large Marge has been dead. For- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, the one thing is for sure, there's really no other character like Pee Wee Herman, man. Like, that's there's true. just, you know, I mean, you have to be an amazing, you know, performer. Like, like no one, there's nothing like that right now. Yeah. I mean, Blippy, Blippy tried to be him, you know, the kids show Blippy, but nowhere kind of stole his, uh, his like, you know, his, yeah. his, uh, his vibe. Yeah. But nowhere, you know, I mean, other than that, there's like really nothing like Pee Wee anymore, man. Yeah. He's inspired some people and different characters, but you're right. Blippy, uh, you know, the, a little bit of blues clues, maybe, but nobody, right, nobody's right. really, um, taken that torch. Uh, and it, it's it's such a cool movie too because I love the end when he like has the dude f- from prison watching the movie and all of his friends at the movie premiere yes. and uh, he's there with uh, you know yeah such just cool cool like just cool <laughs> cool vibes you know um, yeah oh my god yeah such a such an amazing movie you know. I think this was another one that your dad probably forced us to watch early on, right? Like, how did we? I feel like it was definitely in your in your mom's apartment, right? Yeah, well, Watching yeah, this he, together he, had to be P- again. And Pee Wee had the kids show too, Pee Wee's Playhouse, yes. which I think we yes, all yes. dug, and that's where we got the string doll. So I, I think the Pee Wee's Big Adventure was that really like big cinematic, like you know, departure. Um, and uh, such a such a sick movie. And like you're right, like he had these God. gadgets where you're like, how does he have a pole like, in his house? I was house? obsessed with the gadgets. Yeah. yeah, and like they they definitely tried to aim for that in Pee Wee's Big Holiday, which also Diane is in as Penny. Yeah, uh, definitely check it out if you can. It's on Netflix. Definitely check that out. Um, but yeah, it's just wild. You know, it's really. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I think that movie still has a very special place and and. A unique bit of comedy that is tough to replicate now, you know. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh my God! One hundred percent. Yes. Well, thank you, Diane, for coming on. Uh, follow us on social media. Thanks everyone for listening. We're at Bobo Touch on all the platforms, and uh, yeah, I just wish Diane Salinger could be my mom. That's really what I. It's would, true. Yeah. She's got great life advice, and I love her uh, taste in hummus. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Diane, and keep keep an eye on uh, an eye out for her for her new stuff, and uh, maybe one day me and Baby Bond will make a spy movie, and she'll be the lead. You'll never know. Yes. Catch you next time, guys. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Bobo touch. Oh.